you know how important stamina is on the pitch. Running out of gas halfway through a match? Not fun. Struggling to keep up with fast-paced plays? Brutal, right? Feeling exhausted when it's time to sprint back on defense? We've all been there. Today, we're going to show you some killer stamina-boosting workouts designed specifically for footballers, so you can last longer, run faster, and dominate every second of the game. Let's get it. What's going on? Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to produce an excellent video today for you. We got a special guest, Sam Wardrop. Thanks so much for being here. People who do not know you, can you introduce yourself and let them know why you're here? So I'm Sam Wardrop and I'm here training and trialing uh, in the Verse Liga for Meta. I just wanted to experience Latvian culture, see what the country has to offer and also the, the football as well. So I've had three or four days training and they've been really good so far. Absolutely love it. I don't have an accent like that. It's a New York accent. You're going to deal with it. We're going to show you five stamina boosting workouts for footballers today. We know you love that. So we're going to show you them. Enjoy. So an up and down the line, right wing back, played at Celtic, played at the highest levels. What's the importance of stamina for footballers? So I think for footballers, one of the most important things about stamina is if you're not fit, your skill level drops like rapidly, so maybe for the first 15, 20 minutes of the game, you feel good. And then after that, your skill level goes down, your performance goes down. So if players master their stamina, their skill level will remain high for the full game. And it doesn't take skill to master the stamina, it just takes hard work, which is what we're gonna do. Yeah, absolutely. And to add on to that, just like you said, at the end of the day, the most important thing is your decision-making. And when you're fresh in the body, fresh in the legs, like he said, you can think better and you can execute your technique. So we're gonna introduce the first drill to you. Let's go. So we're back just as we promised. First drill of the day is one of Sam's favorites. I see it on his Instagram all the time. Make sure you follow him, link down below. Let us know what the four fours are. So the four fours are a staple of fitness. If you want to play at a good level, you want to play at a high level, you should be able to do this. So you're going to start in the, the corner flag. You're going to aim to run for four minutes and you're going to aim to get three laps of an 11 a side pitch or one kilometer. Take four minutes rest, sorry, one minute rest and then repeat four times. And for you guys and girls who don't have access to a full-size pitch, don't make any excuses. What you can do is just get some ground, create yourself a rectangle, and do the same thing. And then what you do is you go there every single time so you can aim to beat your score. So for workout number two, I'm gonna read this one from my phone. It's kind of hard to remember. This is a tough workout. If you're a beginner, please cut this in half. So essentially what you're gonna do, it's gonna be 20 minutes of work. I like to call this the fartlek fives. You're gonna do five minutes total, 10 seconds of a full sprint, 10 seconds of a very, very light jog. You're gonna do 16 sets of that. Then you're gonna take two minutes, two to three minutes of a full standstill rest or a walk. You're then gonna go into another five minutes of a 20 second sprint, 20 second jog for eight sets, another two to three minutes rest. Then you're gonna do another set if you're advanced. Let them know what the next two sets are. So we are 10 second sprint, 10 second jog for 16 sets. Then the final one, two minutes rest, five minutes of work, 20 seconds sprint, 20 seconds jog, eight sets. Yeah, so as you see, very tough one. What you wanna do on the sprinting, you're all out, maximum intent. The jog, what you wanna do is make sure you are catching your breath, you are resting, and then you go all out for those amount of sets. You rest for two to three minutes and make sure you stretch after this one. So we're back for drill number three. So we have 15 seconds on, 15 seconds off, you're gonna do eight reps. Aim for 75 to 85% of your max speed. You're gonna take three minutes rest, and then you're gonna complete one more round or another round, depending on your fitness levels.
And Sam brought up a great point. Do you give people distances? Normally we would. I think it's a great idea to do that. But as I said before, we don't want excuses. So just find yourself some grass. You can do it on the asphalt if you want. I always say grass, turf, or sand is better before the asphalt. But as always, something is better than nothing. So back for the next one, stamina boosting workout number four. This is the one on, two off. So what you're gonna do is gonna be one minute on, two minutes off. Essentially what I would do, we're gonna show you, is you're gonna go to one side of the pitch. So for example, at the halfway line, you're gonna try to get around the pitch in one minute. That's your goal. Then you're gonna take two minutes off, and then depending on your fitness levels, you're gonna repeat it for six to 10 reps in weeks one and two. Obviously, we're gonna talk about progressive overload later. In weeks three and four, you're gonna to aim to go higher for about eight to 14 reps. As always, take it slowly and listen to your body. How's that one sound? Sounds tough. Yeah. <laughs> The fifth and final stamina drill for today is going to be 12 minute continuous run. So you're going to start on one part of the pitch and you're going to measure your distance by continuously running for 12 minutes. Whatever you get, whatever distance you hit, save it, take a note of it and the next time you come to do this workout, you're going to try and beat it or at least get the same. Love. So it's very important to boost your stamina, obviously doing the workouts to increase the capacity of your heart as well as your lungs. But one thing you cannot forget about is proper nutrition. As I always say, follow the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 eat according to your goals, whole foods. 20% eat what you love. 80-20 rule, because the importance of nutrition is it keeps that body fat off, keeps you at the right weight, which allows you to run longer, faster, and quicker. If you're carrying too much load, it's gonna be much tougher on the heart as well as the lungs to perform the runs. Think of it like this, if you had a 20 pound weight vest on, if you had a 10 kilo weight vest on, it would be much harder to run. So what we wanna make sure we do is we stick to proper nutrition. Don't be overly strict, don't be too crazy because that leads to binge eating. The goal at the end of the day is consistency over intensity over a long period of time. What's your thoughts overall on nutrition and the contribution to stamina and match fitness? I think it's, it's massive. I like your 80-20 rule. When I was playing, I'm still playing, but I try and follow the principle where when I can control what I'm eating, so in the house, when I'm going about kind of day-to-day -day life, if I'm working during the day, I make sure I prepare meals. So then when it comes to, for example, I go out for a meal with family, with friends, and I can't necessarily control what I'm eating. It's maybe you're getting dessert, you're eating bigger portions, maybe higher calorie foods. It, it doesn't matter because you've controlled, you know, you've looked after, after yourself really good during the week and then that little kind of probably 20% is, is okay to, to enjoy yourself. Yeah, absolutely love that. At the end of the day, food brings people together. So it's super important to enjoy with loved ones. So the next underrated tip we want to give you for improving your stamina is breath work. Breath work is absolutely essential. Any tips and techniques you use to recover mid-game or during game when you're running uh, in terms of breath work? So one that I've introduced recently is hands on my knees. So here, head tilted slightly kind of forwards and up. And I feel as though as a kid, it's kind of ingrained into you that you shouldn't do that. It's maybe a sign of weakness, but you know, we just named some big players, Michael Jordan, Messi, there's some top players, top athletes that use this technique to kind of fill their, their lungs back up with oxygen, especially after hard sprints and games and training. So I think it's okay to do this. Yeah, absolutely. Just like we were talking about before, a lot of coaches want you to put the hands on the head, but essentially when you do that technique, it allows the lungs to expand, allows the thorax to expand to get more oxygen to the body. If your coach has a problem with it, refer to this video and tell them Wardrop and Rick Fit told you that's all right. 
Anyways, other than that, what you want to try to do throughout the day is you want to try to get used to nasal breathing. Nasal breathing is one of the most effective and easy ways to improve your overall health, actually the structure of your face and how you look day to day. So you want to use that nasal breathing. I wouldn't do the mouth tape. I, I think that's a little overboard when you sleep. I've tried it before. I felt like I was suffocating. I would advise that. If you have someone else you refer to who says to do that, that's fine. The last thing I want to talk about is breath work after training and also in the morning. Essentially what proper breath work does, something like a four, seven, eight. Inhale four, hold seven at the top. Exhale eight all through the nose. What that does is that gets you into a parasympathetic nervous system state. When you're in a parasympathetic nervous system state, that allows the body to rest and digest. So you should do this in the morning when you wake up and then after training to have your body go into a recovery state. Hope that's not too much science for you. It's all good. So another secret hack for you is the importance of progressive overload with this stamina. So what's your advice in terms of players improving their fitness over time instead of right away and doing that TNDO, take no days off, grind mode type stuff? I think it's hard because most players want to do as much as they can all the time, but there's a reason that professional top level teams slowly reintroduce their players when they come back for pre-season. They don't go straight into a 90 minute match players will probably spend four weeks of progressively increasing their training, their gym work, they'll play 45 minutes, they'll play 60, then they'll play 90. So if the top teams are doing it, you know, if, if you're not at that level yet, there's a reason they do it, so you should try to kind of emulate and copy what, what top level athletes and players are doing. Yeah, absolutely. Love that. And one more thing to add, like we were talking about before, if you go too hard too quickly and you end up pulling something, which is something I see, like Sam said, a lot of people try to do something, they try to do things too quickly, which leads to injury, which means you're gonna be on the sideline, you're not playing with your team. At the end of the day, the most important thing as a footballer is to play games, play training. Doesn't matter how much extra fitness and individual training you do, if you're not in the game with your team and improving during game time, it does you no good. So make sure you do this slowly but consistently. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. Five stamina boosting workouts, and of course, we plugged in a couple secret hacks here and there. Thank you so much, Sam, to coming out and joining us for this video. Any last words for the audience in terms of boosting their fitness? I would just say you have to do the work. No one's gonna do it for you, and as we said at the start of the video, if you have a high fitness level, you have a high skill level as well. Absolutely love it. Give a quick plug of uh, where they can find you. Sam Wardrop, 97, on Instagram. Absolutely love it. Maybe we see this guy playing in the US quite soon. Could be very interesting. Anyways, one last thing. This right here was a bunch of aerobic workouts. So I didn't want to bore you at the beginning, at the intro of the video, but I'm going to tell you at the end, there's going to be another video coming with the anaerobic workouts. Football is an anaerobic alactic sport, so essentially you need multiple energy systems to be working. The reason I started with aerobic first is because you have to build the capacity in the heart, you have to build the capacity in the lungs, you have to build the capacity in the limbs to make sure you can do the anaerobic workouts, which is gonna be a lot of change of direction, a lot of repeated sprintability, which is very important, but you won't get there if you don't have a good aerobic base. What a lot of people get misunderstood is they think just running five kilometers is gonna get you there. But if you time it properly, if you do proper workouts, you overload it well, that's gonna develop you a nice aerobic base, which is gonna help you recover from the anaerobic bouts, the repeated sprint ability. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope this all makes sense. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Deuces. Hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you click one of these two videos right here to stay up to date with the best football development channel here on YouTube. And most importantly, don't forget to drink your sparkling water. Deuces.